How are you guys? How did, it, how did it work out to, uh, to come back here? Like the mechanics of it? Well, yeah, 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 yeah flyer, driver. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, very privileged to come back, really. Um, I thank Coach Pete for the opportunity, especially after leaving. And then uh, the first time I was here, there were a lot of connections made. And it felt like home to come back. So it was a no-brainer if Pete was on the same page. What do you make out of the, the rookie receivers so far? Man, they were really on the come till they got dinged up. So I can speak for the two that are hurt, Derek and Bo, very intelligent. They have the right mindset, physically really gifted. Uh, Bo's a 4'3 something guy and Derek's 4'4 at 220 something pounds and really, really coachable and they really adopted the technique. So I was excited to see where they could go. Um, there's been a pause right now, obviously, but they'll pick it up when they come back. And then Kevin has done a great job in the slot, too. Very smart, too. He's really twitchy and explosive. Wants it. He's a dog. I've seen the blocking film from last year. Uh, the last place I was, we wanted to draft him. We were really high on him. Um, so I've been very impressed. How would you describe your relationship with DK and what role did he play? Maybe you could back to uh, Very close uh, on a human level. Um, I can't wait to coach him when he comes back, but uh, I think he and I have a very good connection. What have you noticed about him this time since you've been back? How has he changed? He's told us he's taken on a more leadership role. I guess that's natural as I'm maturing a little bit, but have you noticed any differences in him? Uh, DK leads by example. He's, um, he's not rah-rah. He just goes about his business and handles it the right way. So, again, it'll be nice to have him back whenever that is. You worked very closely with him uh, his second year when you were here. Where yeah. did you see him grow the most? In the I've told people he's the best receiver I've ever been around that took the techniques from practice into the game. Like how if we ran a stutter hinge versus Patrick Peterson, how it looked in walkthrough, how it looked in individual period, how it looked in team, is exactly how it looked against Arizona. And you can look at the tape. I've actually made cut-ups of here's how he did it here, and here's how it looked in the game. The Stefan Gilmore uh, V route, pylon route that he caught, we've got walk-through reps of him running exactly like that. He had to get a yard inside the hash. He had to get his eyes back for a count. Otherwise, Stefan would not undercut him. So it's very rare for a receiver under duress, under the lights, to go do that in a game, and he did it perfectly. You watch the clip. As soon as he touches the hash, his eyes come back inside. Steph goes underneath, and he puts his foot in the ground and goes over the top. Had it been one yard off, that play wouldn't have worked. And even with all that precision, it was still a bang-bang play downfield. So he's, he's the best I've seen at that. As a passing game coordinator, what do your duties look like during the week? Uh, well, that'll be defined actually tomorrow in a meeting. But <laughs> because right now it's off season, so we're just coaching our positions. But um, I'll be able to answer that in more detail after tomorrow. What do you think you want it to be? You know, I'm really technique driven, so I would like it to be that if get the tight ends, get the running backs, all of them running great routes, so it looks like all the receivers are running the same routes. And then whatever game planning assisting I can do. With, with DK, is there, is there, obviously there's still a young player, the room for growth that he has, is there a spot where you see that that can still hurt? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's young in the position, so he's like a sponge. Whatever you tell him, now let's, let's add to it. Okay, if maybe we're at algebra, let's go to algebra two, let's go to calculus, because the nuances of reading defenses on the run, all of those things are untapped right now. So sky's the limit for him here during his rookie season but of that uh, that you saw like where do you think he's how do you assess the progress he's made as a route runner from then to now you know one of the big things we worked on in 2020 was his body posture and drive phase and if you look at 2020 film he was really good in stance and start and coming off the ball with a low lean and as a long lever guy if you have that low pad level at the top of the break it makes your route cuts much more efficient so he did a great job in 2020 on that 
change, wide receiver continue to change. Not in that, it just seems like the wide receiver position is just the athlete and the players continue to be dominant in this league. I think it's always been if you have that unicorn out there, and in the past it was put him out at X and let him win. I mean, Green Bay does that with Devontae, right? Whenever there's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, he gets a signal and goes wins. So that's extremely valuable. So I think it's been around. There just might be maybe more young ones right now that can do that. You were around for Freddie Swain's rookie season. Where have you seen him make the biggest strides now that he's going into year three? Uh, very similar in terms of DK, like lowering his pad level, running with drive phase. But Freddie's really smart. He understands the premise of the concept, the why of why I have to run this route this way because I may not get open, but I might be a placeholder to hold a defense so something else happens. So Freddie's very savvy in that regard. What do you made of the spring that Cody Thompson's had? It's excellent. He, he's had the best spring of any receiver. And a lot of the things I was saying about DK, about being diligent, taking practice to the team reps, he's done that. How did you get into American football growing up in London? Um, I moved to Texas in seventh grade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was it. Did you get any interest in it before while you were growing no, up? No, I didn't really know what it was. Um, I lived in Kuwait for a bit, and I got a book from the library that talked about some of the, the legendary players and it piqued my interest. It was just their life stories. And then sometimes someone would bring a Nerf ball to recess and we'd run around with it. But when I got to Texas, my whole neighborhood played football every afternoon. And so I got put on a team and I could catch. So I learned everything else. What part of Texas? Plano. When, yep. when did you live in Kuwait? I lived in Kuwait fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. What stood out, to, what stood out about you to What's that about Tyler Lock, excuse me, uh, when you were able to be around him? Tyler's extremely unique in that he's such a savvy player. He's a thinker. Um, he knows the defenses inside and out. He knows the guy he's playing against. He knows all the nuances of how he's going to cover him. And Tyler, within the framework of a concept, can come up with this sneaky way to get himself open. It's amazing to watch. Coach, one other guy like that, T.Y., was very much the same way, where you're like, how did he do that? How did he think of that on the run? And it's beyond coaching. It's just this innate ability that these players have. There are only certain players that, with it, like you said, within the framework, he obviously has to do certain things, but he also has the flexibility, the freedom to kind of freelance a little bit. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you can't just let it, let it ride with everyone because it'll be a circus out there. But certain guys really understand timing and spatial awareness, so you can give them some leeway. Tyler's one of them. I'm sure you've told the story a lot too, but how did you end up coming to UW? And you were obviously there at a really amazing time for the program. Yeah. There. Um, so I was at UCLA as a walk-on, and when I walked on, certain promises were made that if you hit these, bench this, run this 40, all that. So I hit them within a year, and then the promises weren't fulfilled, so I was, I transferred. Teams doing like split split safety structure stuff, kind of what you guys are going through. Now, what does that change about the passing game and maybe what the receivers are actually doing? Receivers have to be really good. Like our defense holds their disguise really well, so it's not even at the line of scrimmage. It's three steps into the route. So we do a lot of reading the triangle, the backer, the corner, and the safety, and they have to get really adept at doing that on the run. So a lot of conversions on routes, a lot of understanding of how the defense is trying to take a certain guy away, and then that what that does to the other side of the field, too. How different is that from 2020 and how you were asked to coach them? I think it's just more prevalent in the league in the last two years to go to that, especially if you have a dominant X. You can take an X out of the game by clouding his side. So as a play caller or a play designer, you have to move that X onto the three-man side sometimes and not just rely on keeping him out there on an island. 